everybody, welcome back to the shop. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to make raised panel doors on a CNC. That's right, raised panel doors on your CNC with some CarbCo software. Now you might be asking yourself, why would you make raised panel doors on a CNC? Well, because I want to, and I want to prove I can do it. I recently upgraded CarbCo Maker to CarbCo Maker Plus, and the features that are in CarbCo Maker Plus are out of this world. So we're going to get to it. We're going to make raised panel doors on the CNC. Let's get started. Okay, so there are two different ways you can do these doors. One is a more traditional way where you create a rabbit around the outside and create just the raised panel. The other way is to use the machine to create the entire door, the frame and all of it. Now before we begin, as I always say, there's many ways to do this programming. This is just the way that I do it. So let's get started here. I've already opened up CarbCo Maker Plus. I've increased the size of this new model menu just so that you can see it and you can do that by grabbing the corner here and reducing it or increasing it. We're going to use 16 by 24 as just an arbitrary number to get started. I'm working in inches. We can leave the resolution cranked up. We don't need to change that. We're going to put the origin in the center. We're going to click OK. Now as you can see it opens up to a work area and the first thing we need to do is create a square that matches the size of our work surface. The first one we're going to work on is the panel alone or the only the panel section not the one with the frame around it. So let's switch to the 2D view up here with this tab. We'll begin by clicking on the square in the corner if you'll notice the cursor changes when you hit the corner it changes from a crosshair to a scope looking image left click and drag down and to the right to the other corner release when you hit the corner with the crosshair change over here to create you now have a box that matches or a border that matches the size of your work surface you can close out the square rectangle tool now because this is going to be a panel only we need to create the one half inch rabbit that runs all the way around the outside that is used to insert into the frame panels that you'll create using traditional techniques with your table saw or your router. So in order to create that offset the easiest way is to go here to the bottom left click on this offset tool. This menu will open on the right. We want that offset distance to 0.5. I've already got mine set. We want it to be inward Outward would pop out to the outside of the box. That wouldn't work for us. Inward would be obviously in. And both sides will create an offset on each side. So inward is what we're looking for. Sharp corners and click offset. So we now have the one half inch that we need to slide the frame pieces over top of. Let's go back to the 3D view now. Now we need to create a base. In other words, we have to raise the stock material one quarter of an inch upward. And you can see that we have this vector highlighted at this point. You don't want that vector lighted. You want the outside vector lighted or lit. We're going to go to plane over here. This is going to be a plane selection. We don't want a point or a round. We're going to give this thing a start height right here of 0.25. You're going to want to have add selected and you'll go down here to click apply. Close out the shape editor and you can push on the space bar and rotate to the left by holding down the left mouse key. Now if we zoom in you can see that it's raised a quarter of an inch from the base material. A little difficult to see but it is raised. Click this box to put it back to a plan view. And now we're going to create the raised section of the panel. We need to highlight the offset vector on the inside. 
go back to the shape editor tool and in this time we want the square so we click on the square we don't want a 45 degree angle that just does not look good for a raised panel 22 is a much friendlier number and it goes right here in this angle 22 we need to limit the height so click on that we're going to limit the height to one half of an inch and what this is going to create is a flat surface on the top raised panel to a flat across here again we're going to select add click apply close out the shape editor hit the space bar left click on the mouse and drag to the left and now you can see that it is a raised panel with a one quarter inch rise to begin with on the bottom click plan view one more time and now the reason we did one half of an inch here instead of three quarters is because I plan to put a carving on the surface of this so if we do the math we'll put a one quarter inch carving on the surface we have one half of an inch worth of rise here and a quarter of an inch left on the bottom for the rabbit or the shoulder so that totals one inch in stock height let's go over here and open up the relief clip art library let's pick something my wife really likes like insects we'll do an ant here for example drag the ant into the center we can close out the relief clip art library and this is just an estimation number we know that this started out 18 inches wide 24 inches tall so we can estimate that the inside would be a minimum of 10 inches wide we go to this side make sure the aspect ratio lock is activated and we'll click a width of 10 inches entering it numerically on this side click apply and as you can see the ant is now much larger if you hit F9, it'll put it in the middle so that you can get a better perspective on whether the ant is the right size or not. You can grab the corner and drag it out to maintain the aspect ratio. Hit F9 again to put it back in the center. Or you can go over here and enter it numerically over and over again until you're happy with the number you had. We had 10 inches. If we hit apply it brings it back if we went 10.5 inches in width and as you can see the height is changing because we have the aspect ratio lock engaged I think we might get away with 11 inches here click apply I think that'll work let's hit F9 to put it back in the middle it is there we need to adjust the Z range. As I said, this carving can only be a maximum of one quarter of an inch high. So we'll change this to one quarter of an inch. Click apply. Scroll down to the bottom. And before you paste it, this is very important. This says merge high here. You want this to be add. So click the drop down and choose add. We want the, the ant to be added to the surface of this panel. If you chose subtract, it would bury the ant into the panel. That doesn't look very good. So add him to the top, click paste. And as you can see, he's now there. If we push the space bar once more and drag to the left again, you can see you have the image of the ant on the surface. And with that, you're now ready to start your toolpaths. So go over here to relief carving toolpath, click on that. And you'll be greeted with the tool machine relief menu. Now what you need to do is click the outside vector because we're going to travel with the tool across from the outside vector inward and up over this relief. Choose selected vectors. Select a finishing tool. We'll use a one quarter inch ball nose. Click it one more time. You're going to want to change the step over from 0.03 to 0.02. You're going to change the tool number to tool number 2. The reason we change the step over to 0.02 is to reduce the step over on the tool. As it passes across the surface, the lower the step over, the greater the quality. 
If you increase the step over, the quality will be reduced, but the tool will travel across the surface much faster. 0.02 is a happy medium that we're good with. Roughing tool will be a quarter inch end mill. We're not going to change anything about the roughing tool, nothing about, nothing further about the finishing tool. We're going to slide down here. Safe Z should be 0.25 or 1 quarter inch. If yours is different, you would click right here on the drop down. You'd go to this area here and you would adjust that to 0.25. This one is set, so we'll leave it alone. Material thickness, you need to set that. You'll click here. Ours is set up for 1 inch. If it wasn't, you would set it up. Right here, you would change this number to 1 inch. Click OK. Come down and give your project a name. We'll call this Ant. We will calculate now. And with a little patience, we'll be able to see that we now have a red box. Not really, the tools are there. So Ant is already lit. Let's simulate the tool path just to see what it's going to look like. You can use the simulation control bar, which will show you the tool movement, or you can choose to simulate the whole relief all in one shot. And that's typically how I'll do it because I don't have the patience to wait for the tool to go across. You can then push the space bar again and rotate to the left. And now you can see that you have a raised panel with a beautiful ant on it that my wife is absolutely in love with. <laughs> Not really. You'll have a one quarter inch by one half inch deep flange on the right hand side all the way around. Not on the right, it'll be all the way around. Let's go back to a plan view to flatten that back out. So that flange will now be recessed into the border that you create with your table saw or your router table. Now obviously when I did this I didn't put an ant on these little mock-up doors. I used some grapes and I wanted to show you the importance of the adding and the subtracting of things. The door on the right has the grapes added, the door on the left has the grapes subtracted. So now that we've got the panel portion made, we can move on to the other style where the border or the framework is included in the outside edge. Now what you'll do here is you will obviously on this one or any of the other ones you'd go down here and save your toolpaths, give them a name, save them and then proceed to run them out on your CNC. But let's move on to the other one. And I'm not going to save this because my wife will never put up with me making an ant on a door for her. So we'll just delete it. No, I don't want to save any changes. And we'll start again by opening CarbCo. And anytime you make a mistake that you just can't figure out, as long as you're confident enough that you can get back to that point, you can always just delete it and start over. Now, we're going to start again with a model that is 16 by 24 again. We're going to put the origin in the center, dealing with inches, click OK. And the difference here then, or now, is... This work surface now becomes the exact dimension of the door you're trying to create. So we are going to create a door that is 24 by 16. And we're going to start the same way we did before. We're going to go back to the 2D view. We're going to go back to the square. Create the square that matches the size of the door. Create the square. Shut off the square tool. Go back to offset tool. Now this time, what we need to know is what size frame do we want to run around this door. Standard is inch and three quarters, so we'll change this dimension to 1.75. We'll offset inward again. Click down here on offset. Go back to the 3D view. We will now begin to create this panel. What's going to happen is we're going to chew away everything in here that we need to to create this panel, leaving the outside border intact. So to, we start again by creating a base. Click on the outside vector. Close out your offset tool. 
go to the shape editor just like before we leave it in plain mode we want to start height of 0.25 we want to add we'll hit apply we now have a 24.25 inch rise in the material close out the shape editor click on the inside vector open shape editor once more go back to square this is all very similar to the other way of doing this 22 degrees for an angle limit the height again the height is again 0.5 well let's not do 0.5 let's do 0.75 we won't put a carving on the face of this one if you wanted to put a carving on you would do it exactly the way you did the other one so this will be a smooth surface cabinet door scroll down to add that's correct hit apply close out the shape editor tool and now we're ready to make these tool paths in this case we're not going to start our tool from the outside edge here we're going to start from this vector here so we will click on the relief tool same menu opens up highlight the inside vector to create it and make it active we're going to mill just the selected vector so it's going to mill from this point here inward same as before we'll click a quarter inch ball nose we'll click it again change it to tool number two change the step over to 0 0.02 Scroll down, click on a roughing tool, one quarter inch end mill. Scrolling down. Now here we have the safe Z that is not correct. You can see it's 1.03937. We need to change that again back to one quarter of an inch. There's no need for that machine to be an inch above the stock every time it moves. 0 0.25. Now we'll click to define the material and as you can see it thinks it's 0.75, it's not, it's truly one inch. Click OK. Let's give this a name, we'll call it door. Calculate now. Again we've got the red box, not really, it's there. Close out the machine tool relief. Double click on tool paths single click on door go down to the simulation button push that simulate and as you can see we'll push the space bar and rotate to the left again you can go to the right if you like i always go to the left we now have a smooth surface raised panel door with the frame already attached You'll do the same thing as you would with any other tool. You'd go over, click Save the Tool Paths. Number one tool is roughing. Number two is finishing. That's correct. You would enter a name here. You would save it. It would be on your desktop, and you would run it the way you normally would. So there you are, folks. Raised panel doors on a CNC machine. I hope you got something out of this video. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope maybe you learned something from it. CarveCo Maker Plus is new to me. We're going to continue with these tutorials as I grow my skill set. So give me a like, a share, and a comment. And as always, we'll catch you on the next one.